In April 2017, in a quiet neighborhood of Brentwood, a horrifying crime shattered the community. Dana Thorne, a 29-year-old woman who was five months pregnant, was brutally stabbed to death in her own home. The tragedy of this incident was compounded by the fact that not only was a young woman's life mercilessly taken, but also that of her unborn child. The perpetrator of this heinous act was none other than her boyfriend, 38-year-old Arminul Nathaniel Cummings. On that fateful night, what began as an argument between the couple escalated into a violent confrontation. According to reports from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the argument reached a boiling point when Cummings forcefully kicked Thorne out of the house. In a desperate attempt to return to the safety of her home, Thorne tried to climb back in through a window. It was at this vulnerable moment that Cummings, in a fit of rage, attacked her, stabbing her multiple times. Neighbors reported hearing the couple arguing that night, indicating a heated and possibly volatile relationship. The gravity of Cummings' actions became clear when Thorne, gravely injured and fighting for her life, was rushed to the hospital. Tragically, both she and her unborn child succumbed to their injuries. Arminul Cummings was promptly arrested by Jacksonville homicide detectives. The arrest was swift, reflecting the severity and clear evidence of the crime. He was charged with two counts of second-degree murder, acknowledging the loss of both Thorne and her unborn baby. This case sent shockwaves through the community, highlighting the devastating consequences of domestic violence. The death of Dana Thorne and her unborn child serves as a somber reminder of the brutal realities that can emerge from conflicts within intimate relationships. On a seemingly ordinary evening in April 2017, the Brentwood neighborhood witnessed a scene that would leave an indelible mark on its community. Dana Thorne, a 29-year-old woman who was five months pregnant, found herself embroiled in a heated argument with her boyfriend, 38-year-old Arminul Nathaniel Cummings. The nature of their argument remains unclear, but what transpired next was a shocking escalation of violence. As the dispute intensified, Cummings, in a fit of anger, expelled Thorne from their home. Determined to return, Thorne attempted to climb back into the house through a window. It was at this moment that Cummings, overcome by rage, committed the unthinkable. He viciously attacked Thorne, stabbing her repeatedly with a knife. The brutality of the assault was such that it resulted in fatal injuries to both Thorne and her unborn child. The gravity of the situation became evident when neighbors, alarmed by the commotion, called the police. Responding officers arrived at the scene to find a chaotic and distressing sight. Cummings was still present at the location, and in a chilling admission to law enforcement, he confessed to the stabbing. Witnesses corroborated this account, adding further weight to the overwhelming evidence against him. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office acted swiftly, recognizing the severity of the crime. They arrested Cummings on the spot. He was subsequently charged with two counts of murder, acknowledging the tragic loss of both Dana Thorne and her unborn child. This charge reflected not only the loss of life but also the profound impact such an act of violence has on families and communities. The arrest of Arminul Cummings marked a summer conclusion to a night of inexplicable violence. It was a grim reminder of the destructive power of domestic disputes and the irreversible consequences that can arise from moments of uncontrolled anger. The incident left a community in mourning and a family grappling with an unimaginable loss, echoing the broader societal issue of domestic violence and its often tragic outcomes. Following his arrest for the stabbing of his pregnant girlfriend, Cummings was subjected to an intensive interrogation by the JSO. The interrogation, a critical component of the investigation, was aimed at uncovering the truth behind the violent altercation that led to Thorne's death. The video of this interrogation, later released to the public, presents a disturbing and candid view of Cummings as he recounts the events of that fateful night. During the hours-long interrogation, Cummings made a series of admissions that shed light on the circumstances surrounding the stabbing. When asked by detectives about the number of times he stabbed Thorne, Cummings' response was unsettlingly vague. He estimated that he had stabbed her probably two or three times. This admission was critical in establishing the deliberate nature of his actions. Further complicating the narrative, Cummings claimed that the altercation had escalated after Thorne threw lighter fluid on him and was the first to grab the knife. This assertion painted a picture of a heated and potentially dangerous confrontation, suggesting a level of mutual aggression that culminated in tragedy. However, it's important to note that this is Cummings' account, and the exact details of the altercation remain unclear. The interrogation video captures Cummings' responses to the JSO's probing question. His demeanor and the content of his statements provide a disturbing glimpse into the mindset of a person in the aftermath of committing a grave crime. It reveals the complexities and often contradictory nature of human behavior, especially in situations of extreme stress or conflict. This part of the story, focusing on the interrogation and admission, is pivotal in understanding the sequence of events that led to the stabbing of Dana Thorne. It illustrates the crucial role of law enforcement in extracting vital information from suspects and highlights the challenges in discerning truth amidst a web of conflicting accounts and heightened emotions. 
After his arrest and the subsequent investigation, Cummings faced trial for the brutal stabbing of Thorne, who was five months pregnant. In a turn of events during the legal proceedings, Cummings opted to plead to a lesser charge. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter, a charge less severe than the initial accusation of murder. This plea was likely a strategic decision to avoid the potential for a harsher sentence that a murder conviction could bring. However, this plea and its consequences became a point of contention and heartache for Thorne's family. Cummings was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his crime, a punishment that the victim's family felt was grossly inadequate for the severity of his actions. From their perspective, the sentence did not match the gravity of Cummings' crime, the killing of a young, pregnant woman and her unborn child. This sentiment echoed a broader societal debate about the appropriate penalties for violent crimes, especially those involving domestic violence. The family's reaction to the sentencing highlights the often painful journey that loved ones of victims must endure in the wake of such tragedy. While the legal system operates on principles of justice and law, for those personally affected by the crime, no sentence may ever feel sufficient to compensate for their loss. This stage of the case, the trial and sentencing, underscores the complex interplay between legal resolutions and the enduring emotional scars left on those who grieve. The 10-year sentence handed to Cummings not only concluded a legal battle but also left a lasting impact on the victim's family, who must continue to grapple with the aftermath of a senseless and devastating act. The news of Thorne's brutal murder and the subsequent revelation that it was at the hands of her own boyfriend, Arminul Cummings, sent shockwaves through her family. The pain was compounded by the loss of her unborn child, adding an extra layer of tragedy to an already heart-wrenching situation. Thorne's family was left to grapple with the reality of a future without her, a future where family gatherings, holidays, and everyday life would be forever marred by her absence. The trial and sentencing of Cummings brought little solace to Thorne's family. The ten-year prison sentence for manslaughter, a result of Cummings' plea to a lesser charge, was perceived by the family as a gross miscarriage of justice. They felt that this sentence failed to reflect the severity of Cummings' crime, the taking of two innocent lives. This sentiment was echoed in their public statements, where they expressed a deep sense of injustice and dissatisfaction with the legal system's handling of the case. In an extraordinary demonstration of emotional strength and compassion, however, some members of Thorne's family voiced a sentiment that stands in stark contrast to the anger and grief that such a situation would typically elicit, forgiveness. Despite the immense pain and loss they endured, they chose to forgive Cummings. This act of forgiveness was not an erasure of the crime or its consequences, nor did it diminish the gravity of Cummings' actions. Instead, it represented a personal and powerful response to an unimaginable situation, a step towards healing and finding peace amidst a landscape of pain and loss. The impact of this crime on Thorne's family is a poignant reminder of the ripple effects of violent acts, extending far beyond the immediate victim. It speaks to the enduring strength of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable tragedy and the complex journey of grief, anger, and forgiveness that families of victims often navigate. In conclusion, the tragic case of Dana Thorne, a young, expectant mother whose life was cruelly taken by her partner, Arminul Cummings, is a solemn reminder of the devastating impact of domestic violence. This story not only highlights the brutal realities of such violence but also underscores the complexities of the criminal justice system and the diverse ways families grapple with grief and loss. Dana's story, though heartbreakingly tragic, serves as an important call to action. It reminds us of the need for greater awareness and proactive measures against domestic violence. It is a call to pay closer attention to the warning signs of abuse in relationships, to offer support to those who might be suffering in silence, and to advocate for stronger legal protections for victims. As we reflect on this case, let us honor the memory of Dana Thorne by taking a stand against domestic violence in our communities. If you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, I urge you to seek help. Reach out to local support services, call hotlines, or confide in someone you trust. Remember, taking action can save lives. Finally, I encourage you to share this story. Let Dana's story be a catalyst for change. By raising awareness, we can help prevent such tragedies in the future and provide support to those who are struggling. Together, we can make a difference. If you found this story impactful, please like, share, and subscribe to for more true crime stories. Your support helps us bring these important stories to light and create a community dedicated to making a positive change. Stay safe, stay informed, and thank you for being a part of this journey.